More money and infrastructure will be on the table for Pacific Island leaders at a summit with U.S. President Joe Biden today. Washington wants to improve relations with the strategically important island nations, but the absence from the summit of two leaders underscores the fierce competition for influence in the region as some of the countries seek closer ties with China. Now, during the two-day summit, summit meeting, the U.S. is expected to announce that it will open two new embassies on the Cook Islands and Niue. A senior administration officials say Mr Biden will also pledge fresh funding for infrastructure projects and increase maritime cooperation. The impact of climate change on the region is also set to feature high on the agenda. Washington says it's also on track to open a new embassy in Vanuatu, as by early next year, but the Vanuatu Prime Minister isn't attending the summit. Neither is the Prime Minister of the Solomon Islands. Beijing had established a comprehensive strategic partnership with the Solomon Islands back in July. Prime Minister Manasseh Sogarave didn't extend his stay in the United States after visiting New York this week when he was at the UN General Assembly. The White House has since voiced its disappointment for the leader's decision to give the summit a miss. The U.S. first held a summit with the region last year in Washington. It was then that Mr. Biden vowed to strengthen their partnership and help the islands stave off China's, quote, economic coercion. Caroline Malone joins us live now from Washington, D.C., for more details on the summit. Caroline, tell us more about what Mr. Biden hopes to achieve across this summit. Well, certainly from the White House perspective, this is about deepening ties with the region, with the wider Indo-Pacific, but particularly the Pacific Islands. And as you've laid out there, it is part of a trend now for the U.S. to continue to try and expand relations and ties more formally with many of the countries in that region. Uh, you talked there of the two embassies that are going to be opening um, after the, you know, after these talks are happening this week. We've had another two that have already opened earlier this year, and there are other negotiations happening for more formal ties in the region. And it's for a number of subjects, really. It's climate change on the face of it is something that the US has talked about trying to support Pacific Islands in their fight against climate change, but also economic ties and development as well. And actually, at the last uh, US Pacific Island Forum that happened last year, the US pledged $810 million to help with all those things. So infrastructure projects, as well as tackling climate change. So they're really putting their money where their mouth is here in trying to move forward Forward and improve relations in the region. You mentioned that earlier summit that took place uh, last year, Caroline. I mean, the United States is increasingly making these efforts to continue the charm offensive in the region. All of that in response to China's inroads in the Pacific. What's the significance of this? Well, certainly, you know, U.S. overall is trying to improve relations in the wider Indo-Pacific. And as part of that, you know, there's the quad relationship that's developed as well as AUKUS that's developed with Australia as well. Um, and President Biden actually was supposed to be visiting both the Pacific Islands and Australia after the G7 summit um, that took place in Japan earlier this year, but actually in the end had to cancel that trip and rush back to the U.S. because of debt talks. But there is definitely um, an appetite from the U.S. to continue to expand relations. And we can expect that Biden will visit Australia um, in the next few months and potentially then also make a trip to the Pacific Islands. We've already had um, people such as Blinken, the Secretary of State, visiting the region. We've had the head of USAID, which is a group that helps with a lot of um, aid funding to the region, visiting the region as well. Um, so we can expect that the US will continue to push its relations in the region, and particularly, as you say, because they are trying to protect itself somewhat and push back from Chinese economic coercion. Caroline, thank you for that. Caroline Malone there in Washington, D.C.